Hello and welcome bookworms. Welcome to this week's episode of The Contender Narrative. We are looking at The Girl in the Ice by Robert Brinzer. Um, so this again is another is another Kindle book and I read it years ago um, and it's the first and like normal <laughs> so normally what happens is when I'm reading a detective book series <coughs> somehow I always end up picking one that's like halfway through the series don't know how I do it I mean with the Steve uh, Kavanaugh books I, I did that with um you know the Susan Hill books I've, I've done it with that you know there's with the Patterson books I've done it with that. there are so many when it's a detective character and I've started like a book seven or something stupid like that because I've not noticed and you don't have to so I was pleasantly surprised when I realized that this was actually the first in the Erica Foster detective series um so I was like okay somehow I've managed to actually get the first in a detective series I don't know how I've managed that but it's fine so the premise of this is a very well-known daughter of a, of a politician um has gone missing and then she's found um frozen in the lake at the Horniman Museum now the Horniman Museum takes me back because oh my god there are, I've got so many fond memories of the Horniman Museum it's, it was right down the road from where my nan used to live <clears throat> I went uh, for so many times over the years I, I genuinely I, I feel like I really want to go back so it was really nice again like I said when with, with the Red and Dead, with the Liverpool one, it's really nice to read somewhere where you can really visualise it. And so anyway, this girl is found dead in, in this in this ice. And obviously she she's the one they're looking for. And to Erica Foster. Now Erica Foster's character, like the backstory of her is quite tragic. She was this high flying detective. She staked out and everything this this drug dealer's house and, and when she did the sting, they got ambushed and five officers died one of whom was her husband so she then obviously went into a bit of a depression she got them put on on leave and then she gets brought back in on what they think is just a murder inquiry nice and straightforward when is it ever nice and straightforward in this kind of books i would be very shocked so anyway so so she's brought, brought in on this murder inquiry that we think is nice and straightforward and there's no issues whatsoever um but then she starts realising, so she she starts going, right, okay, so what about this? Like, what about this second phone? What about, like, where, why was she in this area? So obviously she starts going down the route, the correct route, because she's our main detective. She wouldn't be going down the wrong route. But she's got somebody else on the team who's sort of like an arse licker uh, with the big politician um, who's like deliberately being like no no this isn't correct. like we don't want them to know that she was in this pub that's known for prostitution we don't want to we don't know, want the public to know any of this so they try and steer it in a different direction and erica's like absolutely not that's not the direction we're going in and then she figures out that it was a serial killer so this guy has already killed multiple women has killed uh andrea and has killed another woman since because she, because um detective foster was getting closer and being like one of the witnesses she she was like oh, okay then you know it's been seen with this person and this person right perfect and then realizes that actually they're onto something and then that person's murdered so it's then that sort of race to kind of prove that it's a serial killer and to then get the evidence of who it is um and i'm not going to spoil it i'm not going to tell you who the killer is um because I'd, I'd, I'd hate to do that to any of you um but I remember the first time I read it I was a bit sort of like you get introduced to all these characters so you know it has to be someone that you've been introduced to and I'm not I'm gonna hold up my hands because obviously I do say when I when I solve it and when I figure it out beforehand but I'll hold up my hands and say the first time I read it I had no idea I I had no idea and when we find out who it is I'm like oh no <laughs> and I loved it I loved I loved that kind of oh shit moment um especially seen as like the detective as well kind of stumbles onto to who it is um but then the second time i read it because uh, i reread it quite recently when i was on the cruise and the second time i read it and i knew who it was because i remembered from the first time i read it but then as i'm reading through it and even though i know who it is i'm like oh my god she's so clever because there's little things here and there but it's it's still not completely obvious until everything falls into place and this is how I feel about reading some um you know Agatha Christie books it's like 
you know, even when you're rereading it, knowing who the murderer is, you kind of still sit in there going, would I have got it? And you go in, actually, no, I don't think I would. So I'll hold up my hands and go, congratulations, because like, you know, Detective Foster is, you know, she, she figures it out. Um, but I really, really enjoyed it. And I feel like the characters were really good. And the serial killer aspect was really good because it's not... I mean, I'm going to say it because obviously it, it does say in, in the blurb about it being a serial killer. But I love when it sort of like goes from just a murder inquiry to a serial killer inquiry. And it is really interesting. But obviously, you know, let me know what you think. Uh, let me know if you've read any of the other Detective Foster books because I have only read that one. Um, and I did really enjoy it. So I don't know why I've only read that one. Um, but I've only read that one. So if there's any other books that you have read in that series and you go, oh, actually, do you know what? I think she would enjoy these. Let me know. Um... So go out, give it a read. Let me know below in the comments what you thought. But thank you so much for your continued support. Uh, keep sharing the videos with people. Keep keep spreading the word. I still have, believe it or not, I still have bookmarks for sale. You remember years ago? Because I bought like 500. So if anyone wants some bookmarks as well, like send me a message um, and I can, I can send them out to you. I can sign the back of one if you like as well, if you want. Um, but thank you so much for your continued support because, I, you know, I have actually sold like 200 bookmarks. So I've, I've got about 300 left. So we're, we're getting there. But remember to always keep it consenting. <laughs>